Hey guys, Shibli182 here, and welcome to part 45 of my horror DVD collection. Well, actually, I guess you could probably call this uh, part 1 of my horror Blu-ray collection. But anyway, uh, today we're going to be talking about probably my favorite film of the last year, as you can tell by the t-shirt. Um, that's Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Um, I don't understand the overall hate for Rob Zombie's 2 Halloween films. Uh, I guess it comes with taste. Uh, but anyway, that's a completely different video for today. I'm just going to be doing a straight-up review of the movie. Uh, and obviously, this came out in 2009. It was written and directed by Rob Zombie. Uh, stars Malcolm McDowell as Dr. Loomis. Escape Taylor Compton as Laurie Strode. Right, sweetie. I killed him. It's okay. Watch. I killed it's okay. him. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, Daniel Harris as Andy Brackett. Uh, Brad Dourif as her father, Sheriff. Uh, Lee Brackett, and of course, Tyler Mayne as Michael Myers. Um, obviously, the central main character of these films that we all love so much is obviously Michael Myers. Um, but anyway, this time around, pretty much picks up right where Rob Zombie's first film left off. In a way, not exactly, but pretty much. Uh, it starts off with, uh, you see the new young Michael Chase Wright Vanek. Um, I believe that's his name anyway. I hate screwing names up, um, and his mother, played by Sherry Moon Zombie, uh, talking in the sanitarium, uh, where he tells her that he had a dream, and he saw her, um, dressed in white, um, looking like a ghost riding this white horse. What's wrong, Michael? It reminds me of something. What? What does it remind you of? A dream that I had last night. What kind of dream? Was it a good dream, or was it a bad dream? It was a good dream, a really good dream. You were dressed in all white, like a ghost, like a really beautiful ghost. Um, which kind of, right off the bat, gets you into the psyche, the mind of Michael Myers, um, how he pictures his mother and how uh, he sees her in his mind. Um, so anyway, right from that point, after that, this is where it picks up right at the end of the first film where Michael has been shot in the head by Laurie. And Laurie's walking down the street aimlessly, um, gun in hand, all messed up, bloody, beaten, um, where she stopped by Sheriff Brackett, and uh, he realizes that uh, she shot this guy, and she's been through hell. And uh, honestly, this was a... I don't know if Rob did this as homage to the original Halloween 2 or not, but the whole hospital scene in this film is, is intense. <laughs> Um, it's amazing. I enjoy every second of it. The only thing I wish Rob had have done, and I've seen a video on YouTube of this, um, is use the original Halloween music in that opening hospital chase scene. It fits that scene so much better. That's just my opinion, though. Um, after watching a video with the Halloween music dubbed into that scene, I definitely think uh, John Carpenter's theme should have been used, at least in that hospital scene anyway. It fits it perfectly. Lori and Annie are fighting all the time. Uh, Lori's using uh, the events of what happened to her as an excuse as to why she's so fucked up now. But in reality, I think she's it's just because she's a Myers. Um, she's Angel Myers. She's got she's the same bloodline as Michael, and they're just all psychotic freaks, in my opinion. And at least in Rob's two films, anyway. Uh, so I think that's the main reason why they're fighting all the time. Lori thinks it's because of what happened to her, and she thinks that all this traumatic stuff that has happened to her has turned her into the psycho or this angry person who's going from zero to a hundred in less than a second. Um, and Annie, more or less, is just sick of listening to Lori's bullshit because she's been through the exact same thing Lori's been through. Lori doesn't know she's Michael's sister, um, so that hasn't really come into play yet. Lori doesn't find out she's Michael's sister until Dr. Loomis uh, releases his book, um, which is a tell-all of, you know, the original Halloween. He's wrote in a book of the murders that Michael committed. Um, releases the fact that Lori is Michael's sister and stuff. So this kind of sends Lori down even a darker path now, where she just wants to party. She doesn't give a fuck anymore. She wants to go get drunk with her friends and, and just forget about everything. And uh, while she's out doing this, uh, 
this whole time Michael Myers is still alive. He's returning back to Haddonfield to reunite with his sister. Uh, he's You're seeing through Michael's mind uh, how he sees his mother in the white horse. Um, which I thought was awesome. I thought it was beautiful, beautifully shot. I thought I understand people think Rob just threw that character in at the last minute to have his wife in the movie, but in reality, it, it's it's a vision. It's his vision. It's the way he wanted it to be. It's you know, if someone else had played Deborah Myers in the first film, she would have been playing the ghost in this film or Michael's vision of his mother, whatever you want to call it. So, uh, it's not because she's his wife. I personally believe that was a character Rob had in his head that he wanted to bring back into this film. Um, so, yeah, that's all I'm going to say on the White Horse thing. So, don't even get me started. It's not a reason to hate this movie, at least in my opinion. But anyway, like I was saying, Michael's returning back to Haddonfield. He wants to reunite with his sister, and his mother, his visions of his mother, are telling him the only way this family can be back together again is through a river of blood. So, he's going to kill his sister um, to bring the family back together. And to be completely honest, I think Rob did a completely amazing job. The director's cut is the way to go. Um, the ending of this film is depressing. It's sad. Um, I don't want to spoil it for you, but I'm going to. So if you haven't seen this movie and you don't want to hear the ending turn now, um, everybody dies at the end. Laurie, Dr. Loomis, Michael Myers, the only person that lives is Sheriff Brackett. And he has to... Well, you kind of see it in his face. You know, he's tried so hard to protect these girls, and he's failed. Um, and he's dead. Laurie's dead. Michael has went on this rampage once again. He was he failed to protect his family, his daughter, his, her friend, whatever. Um, so yeah, just a very depressing ending, especially when you think of it as Michael looks up to Dr. Loomis as a surrogate father in a way, and uh, Loomis has kind of betrayed him in you know selling Michael's life story to become rich and famous when Michael actually looked up to this guy and looked to him as a father. So the, the taking off the mask and shedding die makes perfect sense to me. Um, it's built up frustration. Um, I understand people don't think this is the way Michael Myers is supposed to be, but this is Rob Zombie's Michael Myers. This isn't John Carpenter's Michael Myers. Um, and I can live with that. I enjoy it a lot. It takes nothing away from the original films. The original films are still there. I love um, The original John Carpenter's Halloween will probably always be my favorite film, but I love Rob Zombie's visions. Um, the only two Halloween films I hold higher than Rob's two have to be the original two, Halloween and Halloween 2. Uh, after that, the rest of the sequels, in my opinion, guys, just don't hold up to these two films. Uh, so yeah, if you haven't seen Halloween 2, definitely check it out. It is an amazing film, in my opinion. I could shit on way too much and unfairly. So yeah, if you haven't seen it, check it out. There's the back Blu-ray. There's not a whole lot of special features. You get a decent amount. Deleted scenes, alternate scenes, addition footage, makeup test footage, blooper reel, um, Captain Clegg and the Night Creatures music video, commentary with writer-director with um, Wes Craven, Rob Zombie, um, which I found very interesting. Um, Rob's commentaries are always captivating, and, and uh, I'm glued to the screen and listening to what he has to say. Um, and uh, Uncle Seymour Coffin's stand-up routines. So that's, you know, it's almost a special edition, but it's not quite. If they add a couple more, I'm hoping for a special edition someday, um, maybe a two-disc or something. But until then, this is what I... Got. And, uh, yeah, I also need to pick up the theatrical edition. Well, that will be in the collection soon as well, because I do enjoy certain things about the theatrical edition a little bit more than this, but at the same time, um, the Unraiders director cut overall is a better film in my opinion. So, yeah, there's the disc. I've noticed uh, my friends down in the U.S. have a different disc art than I do, and that was kind of upsetting. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but in behind the disc you have a nice little picture of Michael. So yeah, Halloween 2, written and directed by Rob Zombie. If you haven't seen it yet, definitely watch it. It's an amazing film that gets shit on way too much. The death scenes are amazing. Um, yeah, I, I can't say much more about it, guys. I, I don't hate it because Loomis is a dick, because Loomis has changed. Don't hate it because Michael's changed. These are characters. They can't be the same in every single movie. They have to change. They have to evolve. Um, and if they didn't... Uh, we'd be getting the exact same movie that was made before, and that would just be boring, because we already have the original Halloween, and Halloween 2, and we already have the original Dr. Loomis, so, yeah, I, I'm very happy with what was done with these two films, and uh, hopefully, 
if and when Halloween 3, 3D comes out, whatever, um, it's half as good as these films, because then I will enjoy it. So, thank you for watching, have a great day, and I will talk to you.